Greetings, this is July 20th and a lot of activity on the infrared. Uh, I'm waiting for some updates to do a comparison between uh, yesterday and today. This is a screen showing the flat lake fire uh, from yesterday and rolling into today. So there's advance on the northeast flank, on the northern flanks. That's the result of these southwest winds coming in, but there could be a shift and start coming more from the west. Uh, in the evening and as the air cools down a bit. We're looking at the eastern flank on this fire and now a change into today. Definitely see uh, encroachment upon that diagonal infrastructure line on an approach towards Highway 97. And with these strong gusts coming from the southwest and potentially turning and coming from the west, uh, you want to be prepared if you're on the northeast or eastern flanks of these fires. Know what your access routes are, know what the vegetation and terrain is like, and uh, check with BC Wildfire for their information. The ground reports are going to be vital in this sort of situation. We've moved now to the southeast, east of this site. This is the White Rock Lake area, and we've watched movement over the last couple of days heading eastwards towards this valley that's probably acting like a chute, and uh, wind coming up from the southwest pushing towards Westwold and uh, the Falkland area. There is development there. So I'll check back in a bit and see what advances uh, were made on this fire line, how far it potentially has traveled. We've moved west now. We're looking at the area around Tremont Creek and its approach northward towards Wallachine and Savannah. The infrared does appear to be out of the timber areas and moving on to those drier, grassy flats that are south of the Thompson River. Um, with the winds coming from the southwest, picking up uh, some speed in the afternoon, uh, advance on this fire may occur more rapidly than uh, areas that have uh, gullies and valleys and obstructions. We're jumping south now to south central BC. We're looking at the fires around the Arrow Lake and uh, north of Gladstone and then up on the left hand side of the screen that's uh, north of Granby Provincial Park. Seeing a lot of new infrared over the last 12 hours uh, looking very hot in that area and conditions were considered quite dry. So with winds and lots of fuel we will be seeing more infrared. And if we head just a short distance west, uh, we're now looking at Okanagan Falls. And in the center of the screen, the fire has advanced up the hillside uh, and in an easterly direction. It may pick up those southwest winds on the plateau and make a move more to the northeast. While I'm waiting for some of that updated infrared, I wanted to familiarize you again with the EO browser. This is the Sentinel system. Uh, when you go to the site, uh, there's a link below, you'll have to maneuver and zoom into the area of uh, your interest. Click on the Discover tab. I select Sentinel 2 because it gives really detailed images. Scroll down, there'll be a search button. Click on that. Uh, it'll bring up a whole bunch of images, but you can move right over to Visualize. Uh, click on the date and you'll see squares and that's when the satellite passed and you'll be able to pick up images in the area that you're concentrated on. So click on one of those squares and images will load in the background. Uh, it depends on how often that satellite passed. Uh, we're looking at images from the 19th and the 18th, so we'll be looking again for images on the 20th and the 21st. Uh, once you do load those images, I like to select one of the reflectance maps to show a comparison of colors. I'm able to see which is vegetation and which are burn areas a little bit clearer. Also, you can see uh, indications of fire, uh, actual photography of the flames from overhead. So we're zoomed into that area around uh, Ashcroft. This is points east, uh, south of the Thompson River, and there we can see uh, flames in the timber area. And in the lower right portion of the screen, we can also see indications of flame there. If we jump a little bit further north, now we're looking at the chasm area. The chasm is in the lower left-hand portion of the screen. 
just above center is a brown swath. That's the burn area from the most recent chasm fire. Moving a little bit further north, this is the Flat Lake fire from yesterday on a scan from the 19th. We can see a lot of activity on the eastern front, the southern front uh, as it approaches towards Cunningham Lake. We can also see the approach towards that diagonal infrastructure line running almost center of the screen. However, these images are already 24 hours out of date and it's likely that the fire has approached. We'll have to check the infrared and see to what extent there has been movement eastward. This is the western and southwestern flanks. Uh, we're just south of Gustafson Lake and very dramatic picture that is fire. But I want you to take notice of within the burn perimeter. There's a lot of green there still showing. A lot of areas were untouched. So there are areas within the fire zone that uh, will come out unscathed, probably due to shifting winds, the vegetation, the efforts of the wildfire crews, and as well as the terrain. There's also a lot of people that live in the area and they're on the ground and putting a pretty valiant effort in order to stave off the path of this fire. So uh, an, an assessment after the fact will probably be beneficial to see where the actual burn areas extend to. We're looking at a satellite image from the Sentinel-2 system. Uh, this is Canham Lake and area southeast. And if we zoom in within that blue tinge that's most likely smoke and haze uh, built up, here's southeast of Canham Lake and we can see fire still in isolated hot spots. And those can continue to burn for quite a while. Uh, we're going to be watching for sleeping dogs that uh, perk up when the breezes change. Likewise, around Watch Lake, where uh, another fire has uh, suddenly sprung to life again. That was an area that succumbed to lightning about a week ago. And it looked out, but it may have regenerated we're moving south. This is the Sparks Lake fire over on the right hand side of the screen. You can see that brown burned area. And then at the lower portion of the screen, we can see fire actually moving northwards. Uh, I believe that's Chaperton Lake. Uh, is, it is east of Hyheum Lake and we can see still lots of activity. Then when we zoom in next to the fire perimeter on the western side, we can see individual hotspots and photography of flames uh, in the bush and those may potentially spark up if they find enough fuel and enough wind to push them along. We're looking to north of the Sparks Lake fire. This is around Young Lake and again this is from over 24 hours ago. So while waiting for an update we can see what sort of vegetation there is and with a southwest wind coming from the bottom of the screen and then moving over to the right hand side. Egan Lake is up there. We're looking at some forested tracks that may provide fuel. So again, if you're north and east of these fire zones, be very aware of what's between you and the fire and what your access routes are. We're jumping over to Okanagan Falls. Uh, it's a little too early to get these sentinel images of the Oliver fire that's uh, moving east of Oliver. If we zoom into the hillside, we can actually see pockets of flames uh, moving up towards the Okanagan Plateau in a northeasterly direction and then going over to NASA's firm system and looking at the VIRS. Yes, we see today that there has been advance up the hillside. So those flames, when they reach up to the top of the plateau and catch that southwestern breeze, they do have a potential to move. We're jumping northwards now to the fire around Lytton. This is east of Lytton on both sides of the Thompson River. We're right at the bend as it turns north and heads towards Spence's Bridge. And zooming in, we can see flame on the north side of the river and then down on the south side of the river in a large uh, congregated block. So there's a lot of intensity going on there right now. Um, I'll be looking for the updated uh, MODIS uh, infrared today and tonight at 1230 when uh, the new updates come in and then a comparison can be made. It was very hot today. 
a uh, lot of breezes. I expect movement on northeastern flanks. Be very safe out there. Check with BC Wildfire for their notices and evacuations and alerts and check with your district uh, office. That's usually linked through the BC Wildfire site. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope this is another resource for you to take a look at. Keep your nose to the breeze.